Hi friends, good evening. This is Dr. Jim Daly with Astronomy for Change, bringing you our weekly edition of The Sky Tonight. Today is Monday, July 8th, and we're going to take a tour of the night sky, see what's out there tonight through the end of the week. We're going to play uh, also a particular note of the eclipse. We're going to talk briefly about the eclipse that we that was observed in South America last week, uh, most notably in Chile and Argentina and Uruguay. Okay, we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. Um, just so you know, we're using this uh, excellent software, this uh, desktop planetarium software known as Stellarium. Stellarium's uh, freely available, downloadable from stellarium.org, stellarium.org, and we're going to be using that as our, our planetary interface for now. Okay, we're looking towards the west. This is a generic scene anywhere in the middle of the latitudes to North America. Looking towards the west uh, right now, it's uh, just about 7.30. You see the sun is just sitting uh, just ever so high above the western sky, and um, using the controls on the keyboard, Stellarium, we can manipulate the sky, uh, we can turn on the sky, turn off the atmosphere and things like that. And we can take a look at uh, what's up there, the sky above us, in ways that would not be possible, you know, outside in the real, uh, looking at the real sky. So what we're going to do is now, we're going to start the sun moving towards its, uh, towards the west. And ever so slowly, the sky will start to turn darker. And we'll see the first stars come out the planets. I'm going to take a look at the uh, number of planets towards the west. Mars, Mercury, going to be coming out soon. You can see the sky start to get darker and darker as the sun gets further below our horizon. Here's the moon. Take a look what phase of the moon it is. We have a, uh, today, we have a, um, it's just approaching first quarter. It was approaching first quarter today. And um, back a week ago, uh, not quite a week ago, six days ago, last Tuesday, the moon was a new phase, the only phase of the moon where we can observe a total eclipse of the sun. Okay, so tonight we're just approaching first quarter, otherwise known as, quote, a half moon. Okay. Over here to the, um, to the west of the moon, we have the constellation of Leo. I'm going to bring up the constellations. Okay, here. This is Leo the Lion. What's nice about Stellarium is you can superimpose the artwork. See how um, see how the ancients saw the constellations and the stars above. We're also going to take note as the the objects in our solar system, such as the moon and the planets, will be moving through a series of constellations, and those would be the constellations of the zodiac. Here's Virgo. Here's Leo. Leo and Virgo are both spring constellations, and we're now in the early parts of July, so they're going to be moving towards the west and setting soon as the night progresses. Okay, let's continue our slow move towards you can also notice the cardinal the cardinal directions, the cardinal points here is west, we're looking west. Leo's setting. This is Star Regulus, the heart of the lion right here. Here's Spica, brightest star in Virgo, right here. Okay. We're coming up on just about almost 10 o'clock at night. I'm going to put it back to regular speed now. Okay, this is the sky looking west-southwest, mid-northern latitudes in North America. And we see the moon, it's almost first quarter. Now keep in mind too that as the moon gets, waxes towards full, it starts to get brighter and brighter. And a lot of the fainter stars and objects we would normally see without the moon become more difficult to see. 
as the moon gets brighter. What I want to do is back up the sky a little bit. I wanted to show you um, wanted to show you um, the planets that were visible. To do that, we're going to turn off the atmosphere here. So this is the way we'd see the sky without the atmosphere scattering the light. Okay, and here we're going to remove the ground. You can see the sun is already set, so here's Mercury and here's Mars. And if we put the ground back, you can see the behind that tree. All right, so looking west, it'd be setting west northwest at about well, not quite nine o'clock. This is ten minutes to nine um, Eastern time. Mercury is visible right after sunset, as is Mars. Again, take a look again. Remove the ground. Is Mercury, is Mars, both in the constellation of Cancer. Put the ground back. Looking to the east, moving east, looking east towards, um, moving to the south, and then east, we have uh, the brilliant galactic center, the Milky Way. This is the heart of our galaxy, our Milky Way galaxy. Looking almost due south, we see Antares. This is the heart of the Scorpion. And um, right to east of Antares, we have mighty Jupiter. Take a look at Jupiter, zoom in on Jupiter. And this is a real-time uh, projection of what the moons of Jupiter would look like. You can zoom in on Jupiter, see some detail. This is the view of Jupiter as you would see it in a large amateur telescope. The details in the cloud bands uh, in the upper text of Jupiter's atmosphere are clearly shown here. This is a view of Jupiter as you would see it with a very large amateur telescope. Further to the east and south, we have the brilliant ringed beauty Saturn. Okay, that's going to be much later at night, still very low in the southeast. And this is um, almost um, 9 p.m., it's five minutes to nine uh, Eastern time. Let's take a let's move the clock ahead a bit and see when Saturn and Jupiter are going to be well placed to observe them. And right now, we're looking due south. Saturn's well placed as is Jupiter. This makes for a beautiful view with a pair of binoculars. You scan this whole area with a pair of binoculars. This whole area of the sky is very rich. It's a lot of very interesting clusters of stars. Um, and when you examine them with the telescope, they're absolutely brilliant. You scan in the heart of our Milky Way, countless number of stars you can see. And set in the foreground would be brilliant Jupiter and Saturn. Let's take a look at Saturn. We'll zoom in on Saturn see the uh, orientation of Saturn's rings and again this is what it would look like in a reasonably good large amateur telescope. The various satellites of Saturn, the, um, you don't see the moon Titan here in this view. In case you're unaware, the, uh, the rather the unbelievably successful Cassini-Huygens mission to Saturn was deorbited and decommissioned at the close of 2017, 2017 September, and it was uh, at Saturn on mission since 2005. So it was 12 years sending us back um, unprecedented images and data about Saturn and its whole system. That was the Cassini-Huygens mission to Saturn. Okay, so there. That's the um, looking towards the south. Milky Way, the heart of our galaxy, the galactic center. It's right here. Continuing east, we're starting to see the brilliant stars of summer, most notably the Summer Triangle. Pretty much overhead now. It's um, just about 11 p.m. The uh, Summer Triangle, Deneb, Vega and Altair. 
directly overhead. We have Cygnus, let's put the constellations back so you can see. This is the Cygnus here, or the Northern Cross. Okay. Here's Lyra the Harp with Vega here. And Altairus and Aquila the Eagle. Okay, combined together, they form great asterism in the sky known as the Summer Triangle. Okay, and this will be with us for almost nine months now, well into October, November. This asterism will be visible. Okay, if you, if you have your binoculars handy, if you sweep up from the south, heading north, up and through this region of the sky, it's brilliant, it's absolutely brilliant with hundreds of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of stars, even with a modest pair of binoculars. This is, this, this is, um, this will be our sky now for duration of the summer, well into September. These uh, constellations will be visible. Now, if we wait a little, go a little bit further ahead into the night, towards closer to midnight, we can do that. Still, I Now it's almost midnight right now. That's midnight. We just passed midnight. You can see Saturn is just about on the meridian. The meridian is the imaginary line that, um, that connects the, um, the north and the south here. This green line here is the meridian. Okay. Even at midnight, Saturn's not quite at the meridian. Jupiter, Scorpio uh, have passed the uh, meridian in the high in the southwest. Saturn is right here. I'm not having approached the, uh, the meridian as yet. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to be trying to. We're going to be doing this every week, uh, friends. Um, and if there's some special event, oh yes, I do wanted to talk to you about the uh, the eclipse we saw last week. And that's in our YouTube. If you subscribe to our channel. You can see the video it was a live video. I narrated the live video uh, by a live feed from Argentina. Uh, the eclipse and, uh, observing station on, on site in Argentina was able to give us the live feed. We watched the moon cover the sun in a spectacular two and a half minute eclipse uh, last Tuesday. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to back the clock up a bit. And we're going to take a look at the sun. We're going to change the date and see what the moon looked like as it hovered near the sun on that date last week. Here, we're going to change the date. Look at how close the moon is to the sun. And you can see, if we were in South America, we'd, we'd see the eclipse of the sun as illustrated here. You can see the solar corona. Now you have to keep in mind, if we were actually on site observing the eclipse, we wouldn't see the moon separately like this. This is just a um, an enhancement 
by Stellarium. It allows us to see both at the same time, both the moon um, as close to the sun as it can be. Don't forget also that we're observing this on location here in the northern latitudes of North America. This was The eclipse was not at all visible um, here at all. The fact is, even in southern Mexico, they didn't see it. So, you can see the sun, sunspots here. Sunspots are basically cooler regions on the sun's surface caused by breaches in the sun's photosphere or the top layer of the sun's atmosphere where the sun's heat, internal heat, radiates away into space. These dark regions, not really dark, they're just are manifestly cooler, hence they appear dark. Okay, so the moon was very close to the sun here, and you can see this distance here, you get a sense of how much we missed the eclipse by. If we were on station in, uh, in Chile or Argentina, the moon would be directly in front of the sun, with it being 400 times closer, yet 400 times further away. 400 times smaller, excuse me, and 400 times closer, and yet 400 times smaller than the sun, hence it's a perfect geometric fit. And again, that video, that uh, live narrated video, is uh, in our YouTube channel, for those of you who subscribe. Okay, that wraps it up for now, um, friends. Please stay tuned, and um, also don't forget to subscribe, and... Uh, Become a free member for Astronomy for Change, astronomyforchange.org. When you open up our main public website, you can there's a red tab there. You click free membership, it's free to join. And we have a whole host of um, features on the website. We do public events, and we're going to be starting to get more active making these videos and engage everybody in public education, uh, promoting astronomy and science. Anyway, thanks for joining us this time, and... Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the video, and please do like and subscribe. Thanks.